Welcome to Leaders Digest at MVJ Summit here in beautiful California at the Terrania Resort. I'm here with Richard Wang, CEO of New Live Science. Welcome to Leaders Digest. Thanks for having me. Okay, so tell me about New Live Science. Sure, it was started in 1997 by my uncle and father. I am the second generation. And their focus, one of the company's focus has always been on translating traditional Chinese medicine into proven and effective therapies that we then translate into specialty ingredients. Can you give me some examples of some of the ingredients that you have? Yeah, so the, I had an opportunity to go back to the lab and they, their focus is on uh, essentially qi, which is a fire. So for example, all that qi therapy or qi uh, discovery, uh, one of our ingredients is called astrogen. It's a combination of astragalus and panaxinoma ginseng. And what they found there was it can potentially help with uh, keeping your gut biome uh, less inflamed. Uh, and through that process, uh, better absorption and better bioavailability of certain nutrients. And what are some other examples? Uh, the one I just took last night, Zylaria, which is actually a really cool compound. Um, the primary ingredient is Zylaria negrepes, which is a, a fungi found inside termite nests. And it's supposed to help with deep and REM sleep and to help you wake up feeling refreshed. And I take it religiously when I travel. <laughs> so. so you mentioned your second generation. Tell me about your leadership style. Does it differ from your father? <laughs> So I grew up with a very old school Asian father as uh, anyone, or I guess you could call any old school father. Um, they were big on action, less on words. So uh, when, I when I joined the company in 2009, 2010 actually, um, there were a lot of processes or procedures in place. It was really ad hoc because their focus was just on scientific discovery and marketing those discoveries, right? I have had come from a AT&T, uh, UCSF, Emory University, but even then I had zero idea what I was doing. And it was really been a lesson in trial and error. So we try to, we learn, we grow, uh, we try to emulate uh, orgs that we admire and we try to not emulate the processes that other bad orgs may have. Uh, and then from there, for example, there's one company I really, really admire out there, uh, Patagonia. The founder's ethos, like it bleeds to entire org. Um, everyone embodies that uh, belief of environmental stewardship, uh, care for their uh, team. Um, you know, I think they have an on on-site day day daycare center, which I think is amazing. And I think their focus on new parents is just, it's an organization that cares. And they're still for profit, which is amazing, right? So you could do both. Can you tell me why you chose B certification? When we first came across it, we're like, whoa, this is pretty sweet. Um, this is literally everything I've been kind of looking for. I didn't know what I was looking for, but it's like a perfect balance of the greater good and also your organization, right? And, you know, I think B Corp does a really good balance of that, uh, making sure that you could, you know, run a profitable business. At the end of the day, we need to run a profitable business, but like how do you support your network? How do you support, support your community? How do you support your workers? How do you support uh, supplier network? So on and so forth. So it's really cool. And the really cool thing about uh, B Corp is they audit a lot of the stuff you do and a lot of the docs you send in. So it's really real. Like I'm not gonna name other orgs, but sometimes it's just a checkbox. But this one's like, no, we wanna see your P&Ls. We wanna see exactly how much more exec executive pay is than the average pay. Um, we want an audit of this and that. So it's, I think because the audit process or the vetting process is so uh, intensive, there's not a whole lot of uh, orgs in our space that are B, B Corp certified. I think on the supplier side, maybe two hands you count them. So we're very, very, very proud of that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an accountability. Yeah, it keeps you honest. Uh, the cool thing about B Corp too every year is you, you have to commit to a couple goals minimum and then they hold you accountable to those goals because you broadcast those goals and then you share with your team you share with the uh, b corp community uh so for for example this year we wanted to get back out into the into the wild so you know we have pay time off for everyone to do volunteering 
And we do that now twice a year where everyone just takes time off just to volunteer. So it's pretty cool. I, I always tell people, you get paid to pick up trash for two hours and then get the rest of the day off. It's pretty sweet. It's a win-win for everyone. <laughs> I, I have to say, I love your passion. I love how you're trying to make changes, but how does your dad feel about all these changes and your leadership style? I love my father. I know he, you know, he did everything he could for us uh, growing up. I uh, love you, dad. <laughs> But you know, he's so old school. Um, I was just having this conversation with someone else with more old school parenting as well. They came from a different era where it was just about survival. So we're very blessed. I'm very, very blessed that I got a head start on, you know, Maslow's hierarchy. I got to start from three already, right? I didn't have to worry about uh, shelter or food. So I already got to that point where you could try to focus on self-exploration, creativity, uh, self-actualization, and so on and so forth. So. I think he's, I know he's proud. You may not say it, <laughs> uh, I, but I know deep down inside he's super proud of everything we've accomplished to date. I love that. He kind of, <laughs> uh, last question. What kind of challenges would you say that you see for your company and the industry moving forward and what solutions would you say there are for those challenges? If any? There are a lot facing our space. I, for, I'm go, for starters, regulatory governance is uh, getting, uh, more strict. I think for us personally, we've always run a very uh, fast and nimble ship. And I can already see the uh, processes slowing down a little bit. I was just literally on my phone emailing my team about something. And you know, it's just, it's a natural inertia as you grow. Uh, there was a really uh, cool uh, philosophy from the founder of uh, Rocketen. Uh, it's the rules of threes and tens. So every time your headcount triples, the communication lines increased 10x. So long story short, whatever worked for you when you were maybe, uh, let's say 30 people, when you get to 100, it doesn't work anymore. Everything breaks. The way you do meetings, payroll, marketing, everything is break because the communication lines have increased exponentially. So you have to completely revis revisit all that. The opportunity for us is we already know that in advance that man, this, this communication process got slow us down, everything's gonna take longer and longer. How do we future-proof that and try to put as many uh, procedures in place that we could still maintain a high uh, ops tempo, high cadence going into the future, right? We have a pretty flat hierarchy. There's a ton of autonomy for most of uh, the team. In fact, I joke I might say no twice a year if that. <laughs> so, um, so we wanna keep that and so people could make pretty high level decisions and take, obviously take accountability for that. But as we keep growing, hopefully we could keep that kind of operational culture. Another thing for us is uh, humility and, uh, you know, uh, family. <laughs> mm, I love that. So, uh, and, um, you know, again, go going back to my parents, right? My father, like, I never got to eat, break bread with him because he's just busy surviving, right? Uh, so we're super strict on that by 5 o'clock, 5.30 the latest, everyone's out. I don't care what you guys are working on. Mm. I want to make sure everyone breaks bread with their kids at home. Mm. Um, in 17 years at New Live, it, I did a couple years at, right off uh, grad. I've never said no once to PTO requests. So I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> like I've never denied PTO once. Because awesome. um, at the end of the day, like work is work. It comes and goes. Uh, but you a major like milestone in someone's life like you can't deny that to them it's it's such an important thing that I personally missed out a lot on like um and again it was not there's no no one's fault we're just trying to survive right yeah, totally. so I, generation. yeah it's like so, different the other so now it's so important I, I hope everyone's part of those important milestones yeah. uh I think I've only missed one school event for my kids so I'm really really proud of that yeah. so Congratulations. It sounds like you're an amazing leader and everybody who works for you is pretty blessed. So it sounds like it's a great company. Uh, they also probably are annoyed because I do t bug them a lot. So <laughs> but other than that, well, I think. Still a business. Yeah, yeah. So I love that. Thank you for doing this today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I was going to end with a joke, but it's fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> and thanks to all of you for watching Leaders Digest at NBJ Summit. We'll see you real soon.